Hey, my name is uh, Curtis Carlson and uh, live over by El Bredo and uh, uh, I'm married and uh, have uh, three your, kids. And are you from Argyle or El Bredo? El Bredo now. El Bredo, okay. See, we were north of, uh, or west of uh, Argyle for well, many, many years. I was on the old home place, 11 miles west of Argyle. And then, of course, we got uh, a little problem with water over there. So we fought that water for a long time. And finally, we gave up and uh, went with the buyout and uh, moved over to, uh, to north of El Bredo. And uh, so uh, I didn't want to leave the old home place, but uh, we just couldn't fight it anymore. And so uh, I uh, uh, went to just a, a one-room uh, school for eight years. And then uh, I went to uh, four years at uh, Crookston, the Northwest School of Agriculture. Sure. And uh, then, uh, of course, uh, I, I did not go on to college. I, I like to say I went to the U University of Lifelong Learning. So I'm still learning at 80 plus years old. And uh, then, of course, uh, I, I began farming in about 1958. And uh, uh, Hanging over my head, of course, was what was I going to do with this thing, the military. And of course, uh, went uh, to the Selective Service course and uh, rode a bus to Fargo and uh, came back. And of course, I got a letter. I was uh, a, a 1A. And so I knew that it would be uh, quite soon when I got a call from Uncle, or, uh, yeah, a call from Uncle Fat Sam, and he would want me to uh, uh, be drafted into the service. Now, this, uh, I guess I didn't know what I should do with that. I really didn't consider at all going into the National Guard. I just, in my mind, thought, well, I'll just be drafted and see what happens. And I know in my mind now what would have happened, you know. I would have went to basic training and a little advanced training and then I'm sure I would have went, went to Vietnam. I was right in that era. And uh, so uh, this is interesting. I uh, just visited with a guy. I really didn't know him. He lived to the south of us on a small farm uh, with his folks. and. Uh, he said, uh, I'm going to check out the guard. I'm going to Grand Fork to check out the guard. And he says, uh, I want you to come with me. Now that was strange because I really didn't know him that well. I knew of him, but I had never visited with him. And I thought it's so strange. Why do you want me along? And uh, I you, thought about it. Can you tell us who his name is? Or? His name? Yeah. His name was Garfield Braddock. Okay. And he lived, like I say, in a small farm just in Oak Park Township, south of us. And uh, so anyway, I thought about it a little bit and I said, well, if you're going, uh, maybe I should go with you. So the next day he picked me up and uh, I went with him to Grand Forks and uh, uh, recruiting officer, I think he was in an NCO, not an officer, but anyway, uh, his name was Ralph Downey, and uh, I sat, visited with him a while, and he, uh, he said, uh, I will give you this test paper, and there were maybe three pages, and uh, other people I'm sure have done the same thing, taking that test to see where we would stand, you know, and what we would do. So, Anyway, I went in another room there by myself and I looked at that paper and I looked at the questions and there were uh, questions that were easy for me to answer. There were those that were difficult and there were those that I, mm, I really didn't know the answers to those, but I filled it out to the best of my ability. And after a little while, I took it back and uh, gave it to him. And uh, I don't know if he processed it or if uh, uh, someone else did, but anyway, uh, he came back and said, uh, well, sign right here, and then you're in. So I, 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 again, I gave it a thought, 
and I thought to myself, uh, uh, should I sign it or should I not? And uh, after a little bit of thinking about it, I said, okay, I'll sign it. So now I was in the North Dakota Army National Guard. And uh, this, the, the thing that's very interesting about that, the, the guy I went with, this Braddock, uh, he didn't sign, he didn't join the Guard. And so he was drafted in a few weeks, he was drafted and he wound up going to Vietnam. But he came back, he didn't get hurt or he didn't get shot at too much anyway, so at least he didn't get hit. And so uh, he, uh, he came back. And uh, after his two years, he was out. And when I signed up for the guard, of course, you sign up for six years of uh, the active, and then of course you're two years uh, inactive. And so I uh, uh, went to meetings. I remember the first meeting. I was two. I was standing there in formation. And uh, but Curtis, you must have went to. Uh, uh Basic training or something? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, let's go back to basic training. How did you get there? And basic where, training? Yeah, and where did you, where at? Okay, uh, that, I can see that again was interesting because most people go by bus or train or somehow or some way, but I met these two guys in, uh, at, in North Dakota there, and one of the guys says, well, uh, why don't we drive? And so we drove to Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. And, and, these, and these two were in the guard also? They, they were in the guard too, okay. sure. Uh, so us three were all in the same unit, and so uh, we drove, and when you come there with a car, you have a little more difficulty than you if you came with a bus and, a, and, a, and a, a many of them on there. And so uh, we were questioning different ones and different things and where to put the car and everything else. And, and where did you go to? Fort Leonard, Fort, Fort Leonard. Leonard Wood, Missouri. Okay. Yeah, and uh, wind up, uh, wound up staying in uh, World War II barracks. And the old wooden barracks. Oh yeah, the old wooden barracks. Two story. <laughs> Two floors, <laughs> and uh, uh, cold heat, and uh, you know we had to take our turn. You know, spend uh, the night trying to keep this thing going, and it uh, there was a problem with that because uh, if you overheated, it was I think if it was water or something, and then of course you had a real problem. And it, you know, just for us, we didn't know that how to do that. And so I don't know if I had a problem with that, but I know <laughs> it was a, it kind of an issue. And uh, so anyway, it was the basic training. And then... Uh, so what did you do in basic training? We did uh, everything because we were uh, in, in, with the regular army too. Because, you know, I remember every morning we went in for breakfast and then we had to say good morning, Sergeant NG, which was National Guard. And then others would say good morning, uh, Sergeant RA, regular army. And so we trained right along with uh, the regular army, those that were drafted. Did you feel that you're treated any different because you were National Guard? Mm -hmm. uh, no, uh, no, I, I don't think so. I think that we, uh, we were... Uh, uh, in the very same uh, condition as those that were regular army as far as the training. And uh, uh, so, we, we, yeah, it was everything that they did, we did. So the what physical is, training and everything else. What are some of the things you did in basic? In basic? Well, you know, uh, I like, don't like to think this, but it seems to me I, I pulled an awful lot of uh, KP. It seemed that way, but of course, with C at uh, Carlston and early, uh, you know, uh, in the uh, alphabet. Is, uh, so anyway, it seemed to me I did. But anyway, uh, we, uh, you know, did all the physical uh, things that they, everyone else, else did. I, uh, I uh, was very uh, surprised by our first sergeant, and uh, I have never in my life heard anyone swear like he did. He really had, knew the English language so well. Oh, but anyway, you get used to that. Uh, we did a lot of marching. I know we got up at 3.30 and we marched, uh, I think it was about uh, 14 miles. Then we had to put up our tents to find a buddy who you could share the pup tent with. And, uh, and then uh, uh, marched another seven miles. So it was 21 miles we marched that morning. And uh, 
but there again, uh, growing up in the farm, I had no problem with the, the, the physical part of it. That was, uh, and then of course, uh, had to crawl, you know, in the mud and underneath the Constantine wire, and then they were shooting over our heads with uh, 30 caliber machine guns. And I know I had a friend that was uh, there, and uh, oh boy, he was so afraid, he crawled right behind me, and I would take the bullet for him, I guess, if it they got a little low. But, uh, and then of course, I spent, uh, I think it was like two weeks in the rifle range, and uh, did a lot of shooting. We had M14s. And I liked the gun; it worked very well. And I, uh, I uh, got an expert battle, uh, you know, a medal, uh, expert medal, uh, because I hit uh, like about seventy some out of 112 shots. So, uh, uh, so uh, basic training uh, it was for me uh, not a hard thing, uh, not a difficult thing. I had no problem with the physical part of it, and. Uh, uh, just learning to take orders and they were trying to make uh, machines out of us and not we didn't have to think they were going to think for us and did everything for us I know we had a guy his name was uh, Henry Howard uh, and uh, one tough guy he had been in the Marines and uh, he was tough but uh, yet uh, there was something uh, about him I liked and uh, I did not dislike uh, anyone really even though they were tough on us and we had to do that and then uh, finished that, went home for a few days, and then uh, uh, went to uh, Fort Sheridan, Illinois. The advanced training was Fort Sheridan, Illinois, and of course the, the unit I, uh, in North Dakota was an engineering unit, you know, and, and then of course... Uh, so what was your MOS then? Uh, uh, well, it, uh, that varied too, you know. I, uh, I was with a... It, at the advanced training in Fort Sheridan, Illinois, we were to be mechanics there. And, uh, but you see, the thing with Fort Sheridan, it's the, it's the fifth, uh, it's the headquarters for the fifth army. And so just about everything that was done there was to uh, trim and uh, keep the place beautiful. It had to look good. And so uh, we didn't push the lawnmowers, but we fixed lawnmowers. Uh, change blades, change oil, all of those good things. So it was nothing as far as, uh, you know, military equipment. It was lawnmowers. And it was riding lawnmowers and push lawnmowers and uh, so forth and so on. And, uh, and there too, there was more free time, you know. You worked till uh, that 5.30 or 6 o'clock and then there was free time, uh, you know, till the next morning. And uh, what, what big town is close to that fort? Chicago. Chicago. How far from Chicago? Uh, uh, it's uh, north of Chicago, north of. Uh, Highwood Park was just uh, a small town that we would go to uh, every now and again. And uh, there, you know, a little too much free time, you know, it could create a problem, you know. And us guys, we really didn't have much to do, uh, you know, in the evenings and so forth. And so uh, we would drive around into these small towns. There again, we had an automobile, my friend had an automobile. And so uh, we would drive around, and uh, I guess you know, how long stay was out of trouble. Yeah. How long was your EIT? How long yep. was I there? Uh, I suppose it was uh, like eight, eight weeks, ten weeks, something eight like weeks, that. Yep. The basic training was eight weeks, I believe, and then uh, I, I went in. Uh, I joined. Uh, uh, the garden in uh, December of 63 and then I took basic in March of 64 and then uh, of course we got got out in in uh, it was September when we got out that was the boat uh, basic and uh, Fort year in Illinois so you finished AIT and you came back home uh, yes I uh, came back home you bet okay. and then of course you know you had to go uh, your uh, uh, Monthly meetings? A weekend, uh, once a month, and then spent uh, every summer, you know, at either at Camp Draft. One year we flew uh, to uh, Camp Drum, uh, New York, upstate New York. We spent oh, really? two weeks in New York. And uh, so there again. Uh, uh, what did you do there while you were in New York? I mean, two weeks, summer camp. Uh, we didn't 
do a whole lot. We spent uh, uh, maybe two days in uh, at, in camp, and then we had to go out and uh, and bivouac and uh, uh, to the north. We were just south of uh, Montreal, Canada, not so very far. But uh, so uh, the most of us uh, we spent uh, much of those uh, two weeks in uh, bivouac, sleeping in a pup tent and. Uh, uh, had to find a body to set up a pup tent, whether you liked them or not. You had to get somebody to finish that tent. What's what's a pup tent? What's a pup tent? <laughs> well, they got two sticks in each end, and then uh, you know I would carry one one of the poles, and uh, and then the one side of it, and your buddy he had the other pole and he had the other side, and then of course the ropes were there, and then you fasten together in the top, and then you'd have to cut so those like this. And you'd have to just slither in there like a snake. He uh, right there, and then of course you had to have your weapon with you. You know, boy, you couldn't leave that weapon outside. So that had to lay right here. And then of course we had uh, the sleeping bags. We slept the sleeping bags. And uh, I know one night uh, my buddy he got uh, a Charlie horse, and he said, "Boy, I got a problem. I can't move." But well, it was so handy. All I crawled out of that pup tent and I just grabbed that sleeping bag and I slid them out and they were kind of an incline. I just slid them out and down the hill a little bit and I went back to sleep and I don't know what happened to him but he must have got over because he came back. And uh, so that was uh, in, uh, uh, in New York and then the, the rest of the time was at Camp Grafton and uh, there we uh, I was a part of the 188 uh, floating bridge, and so uh, we worked with that for a while, and uh, we did set that up in a river, uh, uh, oh, it was over by Hillsboro, and uh, it took a better part of a day to set it up and then test it by driving across it. Then we built another bridge, uh, and that time we were uh, just... Uh, Those are floating bridges? Flo uh, floating bridges, yes, that okay. was the... But now the, the other bridge that we were to build, uh, was we had to use whatever we could find. So uh, we maybe you know had to cut down a tree or two or three or whatever and spend uh, and then uh, you know get the, so and uh, I can't remember if they made us test that by driving across it or not. But uh, I know. And you did this on weekends? Yeah, this is the two, uh, yeah, I did, did, no, 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 this is the two, two, uh, two weeks, two. the two weeks that we had to spend uh, summer camp, yeah. Uh, most of the things uh, we did on the weekends was uh, at the armory. Uh, we would go out to, uh, west uh, or Turtle River, and they had uh, the rifle range was out there, and we would, uh, uh, you know, shoot and uh, and of course that was the uh, with the M1s, not the 14, and that uh, I didn't like the M1 as much as that 14. I liked the 14; it worked good, and uh, so uh, yeah, and then. Uh, I was just looking at some papers this morning just to kind of refresh my memory a little bit and uh, I saw that I was the, the chief of the of the 188 uh, and uh, the, the bridge platoon in the float bridge and uh, I couldn't even remember that. I couldn't remember that being chief there. And then... Uh, when you say chief, what does that mean? <laughs> you, you're, you're in charge? <laughs> the, the lead, I'm supposed to be the leadership. <laughs> and. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I did that, and then uh, <clears throat> that was the 180. Then uh, I know when <clears throat> I was coming close to my uh, my uh, six years, uh, maybe the last year or so, then we went into uh, heavy equipment. Uh, what was your rank? What? What, what was your rank? I uh, ended up uh, Sergeant E5. Yeah. Okay. And if I would have then, you know, stayed on, I would have been uh, Staff Sergeant. and. Uh, so uh, yeah, and then so then I uh, became uh, the head uh, of the heavy equipment too, and uh, that was kind of a challenge because uh, I had really not been trained in any of the heavy equipment uh, anywhere, other than I grew up on a farm and I, you know, uh, farmed with caterpillars, and uh, so. Uh, uh, we had, uh, there was a lot of equipment and uh, D7, I remember when we were building that bridge, the operator of the 7, <clears throat> and uh, I suppose it kind of fell on me, but uh, the river was low, 
uh, there was not much water in it, and so they wanted to get across to the other side and do some work, uh, some approach work. And so they said, well, I think we can cross the river. And I said, I don't think you can, but uh, I should have been a little tougher with them. But uh, they did uh, try to make it across, and they got all the way to the bank on the other side, and they could not go up the bank. And then, of course, we had uh, <coughs> a wrecker, a really a heavy, big, uh, wrecker unit and uh, had to hook on and pull it back the same way. And so uh, that, uh, I can't remember if the officers over me then uh, gave me a little problem. I know one time we came back with it and we had to clean it up. That was from that time and, uh, and I know uh, we didn't get it done soon enough and it was time to, for everyone to leave and nobody could leave until we got Clean, it all cleaned up, so I remember then uh, an officer uh, chewed me out quite royally for not getting the men to work hard enough. But uh, During your military career, do you wish you'd have done anything different? Uh, you mean in regard to uh, uh, joining, like uh, enlisting in a Navy or Air Force? Or? It, do you wish you'd have done something different? <clears throat> uh, looking back at that, I know when I spoke here a few years ago at the memorial service here in town, I said, I suppose I maybe need to feel kind of bad that I didn't go to Vietnam. I knew the guy I was talking to had been in Vietnam, and he said, for goodness sakes, don't feel bad about that at all, because no, no, you did not want to go to Vietnam. He'd been there. And uh, so, uh, as far as enlisting, like in the Air Force, like in the Navy, no. I was busy farming, and I just... It all worked out for you. What's that? It all worked out for you. As it worked as... out. Yeah. It worked out. And, uh, no, uh, I, I can't say I have any, any regrets. I cannot. Uh, because... You know, some didn't have to go. They got married and they got kids and they this and that and other things. And uh, but I was not married, and I uh, I knew I was going to be drafted, and I, I really didn't pursue, uh, you know, talking to anyone or going anywhere, talking to anybody, uh, you know, recruiters or anything uh, pertaining to what what branch I should uh, go into if I and uh, like. It was a guy sell, sell, selling uh, poppies at uh, Economy the other day, and uh, he said, I said, what uh, branch of service? He said, uh, Navy, and I said, Army, and he said, oh, I feel sorry for you. And, uh, but no, that was okay. I, he enjoyed the Navy, and that was fine, but uh, I uh, was in the Army, and that was, that was fine. And so uh, I, I, I just talked, my, like I said, I just talked to my brother-in-law, and he was uh, in the Marines, he was in Vietnam, and uh, something within me, I don't know, as a man or whatever, I would have liked to see some of the action in Vietnam. I would like to. Maybe not coming home alive, coming home in a bag. But uh, I, if there's any regrets, I maybe would. I feel you missed out on something like that. I, I don't know. <laughs> when I listen to him talking, and I, uh, like, 31 days they were out and, uh, you know, and it was, you know, wet and everything else and hardly could change clothes or anything. And uh, something within me says, boy, you know, I, I would have kind of liked that challenge, but uh, I, I didn't have it. Well, Curtis, I, uh, I want to thank you for your service. Thank you for doing this interview. You're well respected in the community of Argyle and the area, and thank you. You're welcome.